hear it. Anyway, <laughs> Richard Bolling is uh, the Hussein Professor of Civil Engineering at Brigham Young University in Provo, Utah in the US and was educated at the University of California, Berkeley. Uh, he has twice been co-recipient of the State of the Art Award for the Ameri from the American Society of Civil Engineers, a very august group, and for the past uh, four years has directed a study abroad program titled China Megastructures for Senior and Graduate Students and Structural Engineers. Uh, Richard's talk is on tall buildings plus sky bridges plus envelope plus green equals greenplex, a sustainable urban paradigm for the 21st century. Dr. Dr. Balling. Well, as an academic, I'm going to take this talk is going to be a rather philosophical talk about cities of the future. The urban paradigm that we've inherited from the 20th century is largely characterized by skyscrapers and sprawl. Now, I love skyscrapers, but I think we need to look at this paradigm critically in terms of sustainability. Let's take a broad view of sustainability, the, what's, what many have called the triple bottom line approach, where sustainability is defined as uh, benefit to people, planet, and profit. First, uh, when you look at the uh, current paradigm, you notice that there is a large amount of exposed surface area. In fact, the geometry uh, this is Hong Kong. The geometry of these buildings is such that it almost maximizes exposed surface area. And uh, of course, we're trying to heat and cool these buildings, which is directly a function of surface area. And we, as been said, uh, buildings uh, consume a, 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 a large portion of the energy consumed on the planet. Is this sustainable? Second, Tall, slender skyscrapers have limited escape routes, inherently. Third, in our cities today, people are exposed to bad conditions, uh, whether it be uh, pollution and dust, storms, heat waves. Uh, in the United States, the, uh, many of the cities were shut down last winter due to a paralyzing snowstorm. And fourth, all horizontal m movement in our cities is limited to the ground level, and so we've got ground level congestion. Is it possible for us to define a paradigm that can address these four major problems to make our cities more sustainable? Let's see what we can do. So we're, we're defining this paradigm, the greenplex, as beginning with tall buildings, then we add sky bridges at multiple levels. And then we enclose the buildings in an envelope. And then finally, we sustain these buildings with uh, uh, green technology, such as ground source heat pumps, hydronic heating and cooling rather than forced air, on-site wastewater treatment harvesting wind solar energy and, and rainwater and condensation, and the use of natural lighting and natural ventilation. So you see this, this basic definition for a, a paradigm addresses those four issues. Uh, the envelope reduces exposed surface area. The sky bridges provide for multiple escape routes. The envelope protects the occupants from bad weather conditions, and sky bridges allow for motion, horizontal movement at various levels, thereby reducing ground level congestion. Now the idea of enclosing cities in an envelope is not a new one. In 1949, Buckminster Fuller proposed putting uh, cities inside of geodesic domes. And in uh, 1967, uh, the Montreal Expo, there were, the, this biosphere was constructed with a space frame supporting a geodesic uh, a dome made of acrylic, which, by the way, was destroyed by fire, the acrylic, so that, so that only the space frame remains today. 
But today we have this uh, new material, ETFE, ethylene tetrafluoroethylene, which has all these very nice properties and has been used on things like the bird's nest uh, stadium and the water cube uh, in Beijing. I, I have some samples of this ETFE here uh, with me today, but it has these wonderful properties being lightweight, transparent, flexible, easy to repair, non-combustible, self-cleaning, recyclable, and inexpensive. It's not a petroleum-based product. Well, the Discovery Channel uh, ran a piece about uh, an ETFE envelope uh, over the city of Houston to protect it from hurricanes. Uh, there's some major problems with freestanding domes like this. Can you imagine the massive support frame that would be needed for such an envelope? And furthermore, the envelope would have to be constructed all at once. So uh, here are some uh, less ambitious uh, ETFE envelopes. This is the Eden Project in England. Uh, and you can see the uh, support frame, the arch support frame needed to support these freestanding domes in this project. Uh, uh, these are not nearly as big. And of course, uh, recently, the uh, uh, Norman Foster Project uh, uh, in Kazakhstan, where this large ETFE tent is supported, you can see the uh, you can see the uh, large uh, supporting column here and the cable net supporting the envelope. So again, freestanding uh, envelopes such as these require large supporting structures. But Let's go back to uh, the notion of this Greenplex. This Greenplex idea is not a freestanding envelope. In fact, the buildings support the envelope and are even part of the envelope. So the uh, ETFE only spans the gaps between the buildings. Therefore, a large supporting frame is not needed in this idea. Furthermore, it, the Greenplex need not be constructed all at once. Buildings can be added, and as they are added, sky bridges are extended, and the envelope is extended to include the new building. So this would allow, this kind of a paradigm would allow cities to be built much the same way that we build our cities today, incrementally. Now, let's broaden this uh, definition of this paradigm. Uh, we can make this more diverse. Uh, the size of a, a greenplex could be just a few buildings, a university campus, or an entire community. The shape it could be anything. It could be a dome, a box, a pyramid, cylinder, or any shape that is chosen by the community. What about the buildings inside this paradigm? They can actually be any form and shape as long as, number one, the height conforms to the master plan of the Greenplex, and number two, that they're designed so that they can support future uh, sky bridges and envelope. So, you know, I had a student sketch up some ideas here. You can see in this example pyramid Greenplex, we have several different types of buildings. Uh, they don't all have the same plan. And uh, the ETFE would span the gaps between the buildings here on this uh, roof of this building. There's some, uh, res uh, some balcony type things or a, there's a water park. You, have, you could harvest wind and solar energy. You got some sports going on on top of this one, a restaurant there. The buildings don't all have to look the same, but they do. Their heights have to conform to the, uh, to the uh, to the predetermined shape of the uh, envelope. Now, what might it look like inside? Well, uh, you can see that it, it must, it's, it's much like the same uh, look and feel of the cities that we have today. Uh, s buildings separated. Uh, it, uh, the, this transparent ETFE envelope, uh, you can still see the sky, hopefully, and 
So the, this is the big question, will people want to live in such a thing, a greenplex? In other words, if we build it, will they come? Well, it's not a monolithic mall, but a collection of diverse buildings, each with a view. So, so it has the same feel as current cities, except the weather is always perfect, noise and congestion are absent, and it's more safe because of the uh, egress redundancy. So these gaps between the buildings are a function as atria, and they provide natural light penetration, a sense of openness, natural air circulation, and fire isolation. Now, this, uh, this idea with all of these uh, sky bridges at multiple levels uh, presents a, a three-dimensional walkable community. So horizontal movement, you have the walkways, you could have moving walkways, electric trains, segways, bicycles. For vertical motion, you could have stairways, uh, escalators, elevators, express elevators. Inside the greenplex, you cannot have gas cars, it's a, it's a combustion-free zone. Because of the envelope, it's enclosed. So here uh, I have a picture of uh, low-density urban sprawl, and one of the problems with low-density urban sprawl is that it, it doesn't make sense for, for mass transit because the density is so low, this type of a paradigm is very much dependent on the automobile. But using uh, the magic of photoshopping here, maybe we can take that same photograph and uh, put some green plexes in there, which densify the population in nodes, which make it very uh, attractive to mass transit system. And then between the green plexes, uh, we can restore the land to uh, a, a green uh, agriculture and, uh, and uh, parkland. Okay. Well, ha have these things been built? Okay, well, uh, here's an example of a, uh, a structure we visited in Beijing called Park View Green, designed by Integrated Design Associates and Arup engineers. It, uh, in, it has a, an ETFE roof. Uh, it encloses four buildings, two 18-story buildings and two nine-story buildings. Arch uh, this is the architect's view of the inside, and you can see the sky bridges between the buildings, uh, the, the envelope roof scheduled to open next summer. This is the actual photographs from the inside of the construction when we, we took our tour. Uh, one thing that concerns me is that the uh, framework to support the envelope seems rather substantial. Uh, although they are harvesting rainwater, much of that is uh, non-structural rain gutter. Uh, perhaps, perhaps we could use a, a tension cable a structure that would be less uh, invasive rather than this framework to support the ETFE, since it only needs to span the gaps. Now, this is the linked hybrid project, uh, Stephen Hull Architects in uh, Beijing also. So, it, uh, you know, it has sky bridges plus green, but it does not have an envelope, so you could call this a greenplex. Nevertheless, it has a very impressive uh, ground source heat pump system, uh, 660 uh, wells, 100 meter deep, able to uh, sustain the heating and cooling of, uh, provide energy for heating and cooling of this complex. Well, we're looking into this idea, as you can see, this is a very philosophical idea, and uh, we're uh, looking at research on, on to, to see if such things are, are feasible. Uh, in the field of structural engineering, for example, we've got to be able to design hinge-connected sky bridges so that moments are not induced uh, from one structure to the other. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, cable-supported uh, envelope uh, between buildings. You, the, the wind load is actually reduced, the wind load per building in this paradigm because all of the buildings act together to reduce wind load because of the axial stiffness of the sky bridges, but the only wind load is on the exterior envelope, so the wind load per building would be significantly reduced. We're also examining dynamic 
and seismic uh, properties and uh, loads for such things. And of course, this whole issue of incremental construction, when you add one building to an existing complex, how does that affect the other buildings and how will that affect the building being added? So there are a lot of good structural engineering questions. Uh, we wonder, our, our goal is, can an optimized greenplex be built more economically than disconnected uh, exposed skyscrapers? Transportation engineering is also a, another major area of research on this uh, Greenplex idea. Uh, you, we want to simultaneously optimize space usage and transportation capacity. So we'll divide the space into zones and try to find the optimal use for each zone. We'll divide the uh, links, uh, the, the network into links to try to find the capacity of each link and uh, minimize both travel time and cost. So we're going to use, uh, we're trying to see if a three-dimensional greenplex can eliminate travel congestion altogether in a high-density urban environment. Now we did some work previously uh, on a, using a genetic algorithm to optimize a two-dimensional city. We divided the city into land zones and we tried to find optimum land use for each zone. This happens to be the city where my university is located, Provo, Utah. And simultaneously we optimize the streets to find the uh, street class. And in this case, in this case we uh, used a genetic algorithm to minimize both travel time of all trips in a 24-hour period and the uh, change. And you can see, we, so we had these two objectives. We're trying to find the minimum of each. And the genetic algorithm started with a random starting population. And uh, as the genetic algorithm pr uh, progressed, by, uh, by the final generation, we, we achieved uh, a nice trade-off curve of optimal plans. We would like to extend this same idea to three dimensions, to optimize the space use and transportation plan in a greenplex. And of course, there's a lot of mechanical and uh, water engineering that has to be uh, done to see if uh, this uh, less exposed surface area can save, can save, uh, uh, can we make these things so that they do not draw power or water from the grid? So my conclusions, tried to define this paradigm, the greenplex, tall buildings plus sky bridges plus envelope plus green. This is aimed at eliminating excessive surface area limited escape routes, exposure to bad conditions, and ground level congestion. And the definition allows for architectural diversity and incremental construction. This could, could enable 21st century communities to plan for sustainable development. Thank you.